Right, we are live. I just uh, pause that thing. Right, so if you got any questions, you know what to do. Drop them in the chat. We're not going to do the old 50 questions thing today. Although, as you can see down here somewhere, I've got the questions count running. So, I'll informally whack it up as uh, we go through the questions. But we're not doing the 50 questions thing. Um, I was debating whether to have the question count on or not. And then I thought, you know what, I'll just leave it on because... It's a nice little thing to have, I think. So, uh, yeah, we've got Steve in the chat. We've got Richard in the chat and we've got BCP. And when more people have jumped in, I will explain about the title. Uh, exciting times, no doubt, for everyone. Mm. Sound and pick are fine. Yes, good. Because I was going to ask today as well. I know I normally ask anyway, but I was definitely going to ask today because Rod mentioned... Was it Rod last week or... Gary or I, d I don't know someone I think it was Rod um, mentioned last week about the audio just being a little bit low and I reviewed a bit of the footage just to see just to gauge myself and you know while the majority of it was okay there was little bits in it where it was a little bit low so just by happenstance today I don't even know how this happened I um, I was just messing around with OBS for for a minute and I found this audio gain option where you can uh, touch up the audio, you know, actually like um, increase the volume of it without obviously increasing um, the mic volume as I ordinarily would do it. So because I realized how to do that, we've managed to maybe get the audio up a little bit. Um, so it might be a little bit louder. I don't know how loud it is. I've put it up by two decibels. Now, I'm not very good with decibels. I don't know quite how much. I, I don't think that's a lot. Because I do decibels with uh, Premiere Pro when I'm doing the editing and stuff. And I normally increase it by, I think sometimes I increase it by between 2 to 4. So I don't think 2 is a lot. But I don't know particularly how it's going to come out on OBS, you know, on the stream and stuff. So hopefully it will be. Hopefully it will be alright. I can put it up and put it down however you want anyway if it's not loud enough or if it's too loud. So don't worry too much about that. It's also hard getting the audio uh, on a video or a stream because everyone has different speakers. Everyone has different computers and stuff. So it always comes out a little bit differently for different people. Um, so therefore it's hard. Even if I align it right my end, there's always going to be maybe one or two people out there who maybe they've not got brilliant speakers or something and it doesn't come out brilliantly. But for the vast majority of people, it's going to be fine anyway. So that's cool. Um so then we'll get straight on with this, um, and today, yeah, so today is comedy short, so I'll discuss that in a second, as I mentioned, I'll let a few more people drop in, we've got 10 people in so far, um, Liam Whit Whiteman, Whiteman, I think is how you pronounce that, Liam Whiteman, someone who I've not seen before, so hi there, uh, says, best thing you've made most money out of for the cheapest pick. Ooh, ooh, I know that one. It was a uh, Harry Potter. It's ages ago now. I'm pretty sure this is... I'm not 100% sure, but this is one of them. This is one of the best. There might have been a better one since then that, you know, I've, I've forgotten for whatever reason. But this one always stands out. And it was a Harry Potter audio box set. It was on a whole video. It was actually the thumbnail of the whole video. Harry Potter audio box set. I got for 50p, you know, CD box set. And I sold it for 50 quid plus postage. So in terms of the amount of money back from an investment, I would say that's the best. 50p into 50 quid. I don't think I've... I might have done a pound or two into 40 or 50 quid before a few times, but not fifth, not sub a pound into 50, 50 quid or so, or even more than that before. That's, that's like... That's really, really, really good. I know there's a lot of people who do you know, 50p, 60p or a pound into 30 or 40 quid. That's doable. As I say, I've done that a few times. But 50p into 50 quid, it's re it's a rarity. It's a rarity you're going to get something like that. Or basically the equivalent of it is a pound into 100 pounds, you know. Well, actually, you know, it isn't really the equivalent. But it's similar to that kind of thing. Obviously, I'm just doubling it there. But it's similar to that sort of realm as well. So it's... It's a rarity to find things like that, and um, well, not not necessarily rarity, rarity, but not it's not common, you know, it's not common. So, uh, mine was a luggy scooter bag for five pound into one twenty. Wow, that's good, that's decent. Yeah, I've done quite a lot of the five quid into fifty quid, five quid into a hundred quid kind of thing, five quid into uh, eighty quid sort of thing. Um, they're always good when you can can get them as well, and they're a little bit more easy to come by because. 
you know, there's a lot of people who are selling things for a fiver that are genuinely worth quite a bit more, but they just don't know it. Um, so that's pretty good. But there's less people out there selling things for 50p or 20p or 10p that are worth 50 quid or 100 quid or anything like that. Question. Uh, ah, good, oh, good, good question, uh, Steve. I was going to touch on StreamYard and I completely forgot about it. So, StreamYard... I uh, went on their site. I mean, obviously, I don't need it. Look, I mean, I've got all this sort of stuff. I don't need StreamYard. But I went on their site. Um, and, oh, it's the thing. Oh, yeah, it's spinning. I was wondering whether that little revolving thing was actually spinning then. Um, I went on their site. And they've got a little contact us live chat, which is brilliant. I love those little contact us live chats. It means you don't have to call up or you don't have to go traipsing around the internet for information. So I asked them... Um, if I use your service, can I do a 12-hour stream on YouTube? And I'll go into detail on why I wanted to ask them that uh, in a little bit and what that's kind of for and stuff. But I, I, uh, I, I asked them that anyway, and they said that's fine and everything. And it'll be a... It'll, I, I don't want to... I was going to say it's going to be a piece of pee, but then I thought, I'm not going to say that because I'll get demonetized already. So it, 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 anyway, it's a piece of pee. It's going to be a piece of pee for me to learn that anyway uh, because I'm a pretentious... Uh, person when it comes to streaming and editing and stuff uh, even though there's plenty of people out there who are way better than than what I can do um, but you know I like to be a bit pretentious with it so um, yeah so what was I saying so I went there and um, they said I can do that I, oh actually no where's it? oh no I was still chatting to them and I've, I've, I've I just realised I've closed the bloody tab down. Oh no! I meant I, I was I was waiting for an answer on another question. I've closed the blooming tab down for God's sake. That was eight. It was this morning. That's why I've closed it down. I'm doing so much other stuff on my computer. But um, yeah. So uh, what was I saying? I, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought here today. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, but yeah. So it'll be pretty easy to set up. I would imagine, Steve. What was your question? Uh, do you use StreamYard? I'm thinking of doing live from the loft again and having guests. Uh, I would imagine if you're thinking it's going to be hard or anything, it probably won't be hard. It's probably fairly easy to set up and everything. Just go on the site. They'll probably talk you through it as well. You can probably go in the live chat and they'll talk you through how to do it if you need if needs be. Um, I don't know what it's like having guests on. I don't know how you do that, but again, I think it'll be fairly easy because a lot of people seem to be mastering it really easily uh, on all these different reselling channels. So the reason I'm using StreamYard or the reason I wanted to use StreamYard for this thing is because then I can have guests on. I can, I think I can have guests on on OBS, but it's very pernickety. It's very faffy and stuff. Um, and it would just be easier to do it on um you know, on StreamYard. So I am thinking, now I'm not committing to this because it is quite a big commitment really, but I am thinking of doing a six or a 12 hour live stream, like consistent six or 12 hours uh, for the 200th, 200th episode of Thursday Talks and it will be for charity as well. So I'm going to create, you know, if I do it, I'll create like a Just Giving page or something like that. And then people can donate during the stream. And if we can get even just like, you know, 50 quid, 100 quid, 200 quid or whatever, that'd be absolutely awesome. Um, you know, so I'm thinking of doing that. I'm not committing to it yet because that is pretty, that's going to be tough. I mean, I've done some challenges, you know, I've done these, I've done the 50,000 steps and the listings and the, the 100 listings the other year and the 50 charity shops and stuff, but six or 12 hour stream, just sat here, that is tough. Now, I don't doubt my ability in, you know, providing you guys with consistent content for that time. I can talk, you know me, I can talk and talk and talk. My voice might go, but I'll still try and talk and the guests can kind of, you know, keep things going, but it's just sitting here. You know, in front of this, well, not necessarily in front of this light because I might turn it off, but just sitting here or standing up here in this kind of this one little spot for six or 12 hours, that's that's tough. That's tough, you know. And yeah, the talking and stuff will be tough, but you see, I'm a very, um, I'm a person who likes to do things. I don't like to sit down for real long periods of time. I like to go out for walks. I like to, you know, I like to get out. I don't like to be inside all the time. Um, I like being inside and I'm a little bit introverted in that way. But, um, you know, I, I like getting out in the day as well. So doing 12 hours from, let's say, eight o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night, because that's going to be how, I've, how I'm going to have to structure it, because I don't want my mum and dad to be 
uh, woken up early or I don't want them to be pestered when we're going to bed or something. So eight till eight would probably be good. Nine till nine would probably be a you know cut off sort of point. Or seven till well seven till seven might be a bit early, but yeah, something like that anyway. But that is a long time. So what I might do is set rules up in the fact that I can have breaks and then uh, the guests, the, the current guests that I've got on, uh, take over, like on the same stream, all on the same stream, but they just take over hosting it while I go down and get a bit of food or something or just have a little rest for 10 minutes or something, just somewhere different for 10 minutes. And the stream's still running and everything and someone else is taking over. I know it's a little bit cheating, I know it is, but I just, I don't know whether I can, I mean, unless I have like a packed lunch, unless I have about four packed lunches and then a load of snacks just sat here, um, and then just grin and bear it, I suppose. I could do that, but um, I would like a little bit of break. So I might do that. And then what the problem is, the structure with guests, because it could get very, very messy with guests. I mean, could you imagine if, if I didn't structure it and I just said, right, here's the link to about 40 different people, and then they all just jump in. It would be a nightmare. So I will have to actually structure it. Um, and then go through people and then message them on Facebook and Instagram and all the rest of it and say, look, are you free on this date for between these times and this is the slot that I'll give you kind of thing. You don't necessarily have to leave straight away after that slot, but obviously we will be moving on with other guests as well. So, you know, you might have to slowly kind of uh, drop out at some point. It's not going to be hard and fast. I'm not going to be a, a, an autocratic dictator with it or anything. But we will need to be a bit more structured with it if we're going to do that. Um, but it would be brilliant because we could have, you know, we could have Nick on for 15 minutes, half an hour. We could have Steve on if he's in, you know, for 15 minutes, half an hour. We could have a few of the American guys on if I can get in touch with them and they're free and the time zones work, work out and stuff. We, You know, it would be good. It would be genuinely quite good. So... Um, yeah, it, it's something that I'm, I'm definitely considering. I'm very, very strongly considering. Uh, and that would be on the 21st of November. So, so it'd be Thursday, the 21st of November. I am tempted to maybe do it. Well, I don't know. I think it'll be all right on the Thursday, actually. I was thinking maybe I would move Thursday talks for that week on the Saturday, uh, just because we're doing this special and stuff. But actually, to be honest, most people will be doing other things on the Saturday. So the Thursday might actually be a better day to get everyone together. So, um, yeah, we'll see. I know Nick also had... Um, this idea of doing like a 12 hour, I think his was a 20, was his a 24 hour stream? I'm not sure. But if he does his, then I'm obviously going to uh, partake in that. I, I asked him months ago when he had this idea, or a few weeks ago when he had this idea, if I could join and uh, he said that would be fine. So if he does that stream at some point in the future, I'll obviously join with that one. Um, and it's interesting. Now, I was going to do this for my birthday challenge next year. Obviously, if you're following the channel for a while, you'll know I do these birthday challenges. But I thought I'm just going to do it on the 200th episode, I think, of Thursday Talks. And then next year, next year I've got another couple of ideas for challenges anyway for my birthday. So I'm thinking, um, well, I don't know. I don't know. I've got a few. I don't really know whether I should save them because then I might, I might jinx it a bit, you know, with that challenge. I mean, I might have jinxed this a little bit, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to go up the chat because uh, I've not really been very attentive today. Um... I know we're only a few minutes in, but I've, I've just rambled for so long there. Uh, Peter's in, BCP's in, uh, Alan's in. Oh, I don't think Alan's been in for a few weeks, or maybe it's just me missing his missing his comments. Johnny Fort 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 Coat Forty Coats Fort Coats Forty Coats. I think I don't know. Um, what did you think of my guess? Of guess which yesterday on my oh did you do a few guess oh well I have to uh, check that out Peter I didn't I didn't see yesterday I was so busy editing right well well we'll get on with the comedy short now because we've got twenty three people in so that's about you know that's about enough um so I I don't think there's any well I'll just very quickly check questions because I don't want to I've just rambled for so long and I didn't really I wasn't really too attentive then so just check questions um. What is the difference between QuickBook and an accountant and price difference? I don't know because I don't use either of them. I would imagine, and I'm not going to get into detail on accounting here because it's not really my place to say, but I would imagine QuickBooks is probably cheaper than an accountant, but there's probably, 
uh, different plans that you can go for that might end up making it a bit more expensive than an accountant. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you want to get an accountant or you want to do QuickBooks or whatever, go for it. Uh, it's not entirely necessary for a small business, but it's always good if, you know, if you don't know what you're doing with accountancy or if you, you've not got any prior knowledge. You know, for me, it, as I've mentioned in the past, for me, it was kind of okay because when I was doing the uh, university degree before I ended up quitting it, one of the um, topics or one of the units was accounting. Um, and, you know, I did quite, we did quite a lot. We did that for, I don't know, four to six months of university level accounting. So I knew, you know, I knew a little bit about it and I thought to myself, well, it's only a small business. I can, I can do this. And although it took me a while to get my accounting system set up in place the way I wanted it, I feel I'm pretty fine with it now and I, I'm fairly happy with how I do it. Um, it's not to say that I won't be looking into an, into an accountant or QuickBooks or whatever at some point in the future, but for now, I'm fairly okay, I'm fairly happy. So, um, yeah, if you want to look into that, then look into it. But as I say, I would imagine QuickBooks is a little bit cheaper than an accountant. Just I'm just guessing though, I don't know, I've not looked at it fully. Um, how do you keep passion to keep doing YouTube? I nearly quit every week. Well, let me let me open up about this because I, I know I've, I've talked about it a little bit in the past. One sec, I'll just have a sip. I've got spearmint tea today. I've not got my usual peppermint. I've got spearmint. So I do have a passion to keep doing YouTube, but I, I recently, actually, it's funny. It kind of comes into this comedy short. So, oh, yeah, sorry. I was talking about the comedy short. Right. I will talk about the comedy short and then relate it to the whole quitting YouTube thing. That's the best way to do it. So, um, I done the comedy short. Uh, I've recorded it. I recorded it yesterday. I edited it for, oh my God. I edited it for about four hours yesterday after recording it and then did another three hours today on it. Uh, or two hours today, two or three hours, it's mental. And the uh, Premiere Pro was having, I was having issues with, oh my God. My all my text. There's a load of text at the start of the video. When you see it, you'll know what I mean. But there's a load of text at the start of the video, and um, it was all blurry. It was coming out really blurry. And so what I did was I tried to faff around with YouTube, trying to find like a um, what do you call it, like a tutorial, you know, about how to fix this. And um, I didn't. I couldn't find anything. Not on the problem that I had. So I was messing around with it for ages and then I finally found out how to do it just on my own basically, just faffing around and uh, and it's not blurry anymore. Um, but yeah, it, so I've, I've done the comedy short, I've recorded it. I want people to know I've recorded it because every time I say I'm doing a comedy short or every time I've done that in the past six months, I've always said it's coming, it's coming, but I've not recorded it. But now I've recorded this one. Now it wasn't really intentionally a comedy short. I still, it still really isn't. In, well, I suppose it, it is now. It is now turned into a comedy short. But it, it, in the original plan, it wasn't really meant to be a full-on comedy short or anything. It's just that I got start. I started to get crazy and eccentric, and it kind of turned into a little bit of comedy in there. It's not a direct, amazing comedy short or anything. But there's little bits of comedy and stuff in there and eccentricity. So I'm gonna call it one. Um, so yeah, I've done that. So it'll be uploaded very soon. I don't know what the date will be, but it'll probably be next week or something. It's not going to be it's not going to be long away. Um, so I want people to know I've done that. So there'll be people that are happy because I know there's a few people who like them, and there'll be people who are incredibly unhappy, incredibly frustrated by the fact that I'm choosing to express myself in an, an eccentric and comedic manner when this is meant to be a reselling channel. Isn't that that's the new thing, isn't it these days? Well, with all reselling channels, all the commenters go, "This is meant to be a reselling channel." When you put up anything other than reselling, actually Laura touched on this in her video uh, the other day. And uh, it's, it's just funny. Well, yeah, yeah, okay, maybe it's got a reselling in the title or whatever or in the channel art, but it doesn't mean it's just 100% reselling. And I actually get into this in the comedy short and I have a bit of a laugh with it. But also there is serious information. This is where it's so funny because, well, it's not actually that funny. It's actually quite annoying for people because they won't be able to distinguish what's serious and what's not. But there is actually serious information in that video. Um... Uh, you know, so that centred around somewhat 
minor changes to the channel and stuff um but if i've done it in a comedic way so i've done a serious video in a comedic way which is just insanity you should not do that that's not something you should do if you're doing comedy do comedy if you're doing seriousness or drama or whatever it may be do drama do that you know don't 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 try and like really mix comedy in with seriousness it just doesn't i not don't do it because people just we either get the wrong end of the stick or we don't understand it. We don't know what was meant to be serious and what was meant to be comedy. So, yeah. Um, but there is little bits of information in there that I do want people to take a little bit seriously. And I'm just plumbing. Oh, yeah. I've just messed up all the seriousness. Anyway, but... Um, so, quitting YouTube. So, in the video, I talk about a few minor challenge channel changes, as I said. And uh, I also touch upon, I think I touch upon the fact in a comedic way um, about, uh, it's kind of a comedic way, but it's meant to, but there's also a level of seriousness behind it. So the things that I'm saying are very true, but I'm just playing them up to the camera and making them comedic. This is why it's so weird, this, co this comedy short, because it's, there's a bit of serious information in there, but I'm saying it as if it doesn't matter or it's comedic. It's it's weird. Well, in some circumstances. Anyway, so, um, what was I saying? So, uh, yeah, so I basically say about how, oh, it's boring doing, um, you know, haul video sales updates, hauls, all the rest of it, and I'm getting bored with it and all, all that sort of stuff. And um, it's very true. I am, you know, if we're getting on to this quitting YouTube thing, I am getting pretty bored with doing the sales updates, hauls, all the rest of it. You know, they're fine. And if I get something interesting, I love, you know, getting the camera out, getting the phone out or whatever and doing a haul video. I love it. I'll always love YouTube. But when, you're done, when you've done hauls and sales updates for four years or four years next month with regards to YouTube, it can get a little bit stale for your content. You want something new as a content, not as a reseller, but as a content creator. So, uh, yeah, so what I uh, have decided to do with YouTube um, is simply, I don't know how to phrase this really. It's it's hard one to, I'm not moving away from reselling content at all. I'm still doing loads of reselling content, but I'm just going to do little bits, little tidbits of other stuff. Not necessarily directly non-reselling. It might actually be reselling content, but just different reselling content than the normal haul sales updates. This is why the uh, reseller toolkit has come about because I was bored and I needed something new to do. And now I have so much motivation with the reseller toolkit because I can review a plethora of items. It's all brand new content for me. And it's brand new content for you guys as well because you don't know what I'm going to review next. You know, where, and I know that that's the same with the sales updates. You don't know what I'm going to sell next. I don't either. But I've been doing that for so long, it does get a bit repetitive. So when I've been doing the reseller toolkit for quite a while, that'll get repetitive. So it's just about changing. I said this on the podcast. I said I, I do practice what I preach in this regard. The last episode of the podcast, or maybe the one before that, was the, the entire focus was centered around change, changing reselling, changing your business. I'm talking about the Reselling Rebels podcast here, if you're not, you know, if you don't watch it. It's on my channel, podcast every Monday, 10, 10 a.m. it comes up, little plug. Um, and, you know, I, I centered that around change, and that's what it's about. That's what it's about with YouTube as well, change, think, thinking about different things. But I do have times, genuinely, uh, over my YouTube career, I've had times where I'm like, oh, should I continue going with this? Sometimes, at first it was to do with trolls. There was one big hit that I had with trolls where I was really getting down and I was thinking, should I continue this seriously? Because it was really getting me down. But now I'm so used to dislikes and I'm so used to it all that I'm, I just keep going anyway, as I've mentioned, so I won't go into that too much. So the first time it was about that, but then... More, you know, more recently, it's just been about stale content. It's just been about doing, you know, doing the same things. And as a content creator, as a creative, let's say, you know, and in, in, you know, I don't, I don't really think of myself as a, an incredibly creative person. But some people may consider me that. But I'm going to put it in air quotes. Cre creative person. Um, you know, I need something more. I need. I, I don't want my creativity to be stifled. I don't want 
to uh, just fall into that kind of mm, 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 kind of thing. So, um, yeah, so I do genuinely have times like that, Steve. I do genu genuinely have times where I'm like that. It's just I don't really feel, you know, I don't necessarily, I mean, I've talked about it a little bit, actually, but I don't publicly broadcast it loads because I don't feel the need to. It's just something I deal with and that's that. Um, but, yeah, it, it does happen. I think it happens to everyone. Oh, anyway, we're not done with questions. Have we? Did we have two? I think I've done two questions so far. Well, it's only an informal question count today, anyway. Uh, oh, no, there was three questions. What was that per count? There might be four. I don't know. Uh, to be fair to Laura, she could talk about clothing and I'd still watch. Yeah, a lot of people would. The thing is, though, this is the thing, right? People think that when we change the content on the channel, everyone's going to leave the channel. And yeah, okay, there may be a little bit, I wouldn't say a mass exodus, but there may be a little small exodus of people um, from the channel. I suppose if you say exodus, though, doesn't that imply it's something big? Um... But there's always going to be a few people, is what I'm trying to say, that are going to leave the channel, that are going to unsubscribe. But genuinely, there'd probably be, I'd probably still get solid 150, 200 views on every video I did, reselling or not. Even if it wasn't reselling. Because I've trialled that. Because I've done non-reselling vlogs and different things like that before, and birthday meal vlogs and stuff. And I still get like 150 or 200 views. And that's like my base, solid audience that is constantly sticking around for not for reselling but for my journey for my life journey um and then you've got on top of that if you do a car boot haul or you do something else you might get a thousand plus but you know 800 of those have just come because you're doing a car boot haul and they all they want to do is lap up that information of you know whatever you're talking about uh, in that haul and that's that and that's fine but i like you know i i, I would rather have you know i'd rather have a well, the, the ideal is having a larger channel where everyone cares about all the videos you do, but that's an ideal, it's not really a reality. But it would be nice if I could, let's say, get 500 people consistently who stick around for every video. That would be, that'd be really cool if I could get to that point. Um, so, you know, and then maybe the other videos that are more just resign focused 2,000 views, something like that. That'd be that'd be cool because 500 people is your base audience. That's a nice base, you know. That's a nice base. Um, but I'm still very grateful for anyone who sticks around and watches, you know, my random videos. You know, the 150, 200 people who watch those random videos. Um, and it's nice to know that I've got that. You know, I've got that kind of base audience. So was that another one? I think that was another one. Oh no, no, wait, that wasn't a question, was it? I'll put that down again. Right, I'm going to quickly look up the chat. Um, what qualities do you look for in a woman? I've uh, well, I've actually wrote this down. Uh, let me. Oh, this, is, this might really ruin my street cred now or my credibility. I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you the. Um, oh wait, physical. Right. I'm not going to tell you the physical traits because they're very. Um, What's it like? Very masculine. Like, no, I mean, no, 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 no. I don't mean that. I don't mean that. I mean, the very, uh, oh, what do you, like, testosterone fueled. I mean, the masculine on my part, like, I want a woman with certain, you know, traits that a man desires. I don't mean I want a masculine looking woman. Oh my god. I get myself into a bloody weirdest binds, don't I? Anyway, so, um, I'm not going to tell you the physically what I want because it's a little bit crude. It's a little bit sultry or whatever so you know the men will understand but if there's any women watching you know it's not very nice for them to hear really so well it's not that it's not nice for them to hear but it's just you know we don't want to hear it anyway so i'll tell you personality and i put in brackets with personality it's more important anyway on here so friendly bubbly someone who is open and honest intelligent but and this is where my ego comes in intelligent but not quite as intelligent as myself um, and then I put just enough so that when I look at her, I think F, she's actually pretty on it. And the F is a swear word, right? So just put that in yourself. Um, likes to go out a little and have the odd adventure, uh, but not too 
uh, too over the top because that would overwhelm, which is ironic because I'm really over the top. So that's quite ironic that I say that. Um, a little cheeky and gives as good as she gets. So that's about me. You know, so I don't, I, you know, that's quite broad. I'm not like we're being really specific there. You know, most people are friendly and bubbly. That's a lot of people. Um, you know, someone who's open and honest. Again, you know, maybe a smaller portion of people, but it's still a fairly large portion of people in the, in the overall scale, but maybe a bit uh, of a smaller portion that, than the people who are just friendly and bubbly. Um, quite intelligent. Again, you know, that's a fairly, that's a good group. That's a good group of people. Um, and then people who give as good as uh, they get and a bit, a little bit cheeky. Again, that's quite a wide... Va so I'm casting my net pretty wide here. Now, if we were to look at the physical traits... The net might get a little bit smaller, but I've got leeway. I'm 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 prepared to uh, sacrifice a lot of the physical traits as long as they have a very good personality, and as long as I am at least a bit attracted to them, you know. But yeah, the net might get a little bit smaller if we we were to say the physical traits. Anyway, but that's just my male testosterone coming in, isn't it? That's all. Um, right. So that's another question. I'm having that. Right. Four. Brilliant. We're on four now. Not as good as last week, but we're on four. Um, right then, had two guests on after my little heart, ah, cool, right, let me go down, question from Gary, see you sold cameras recently untested, is this because they're broken or do you not test, if you are missing, if so, you're missing, I know, I know, but I don't know how to test, how do you test cameras, like, I know that you, you can test certain, like, I know how to test certain ones, I think I've done it before, I think I had, no, because when I saw, I saw a load of lenses ages ago, and I got pretty good money for them, but uh, I didn't test them. They were sold as untested as well. I don't know how you test them vintage cameras. That's why. I'm just like, oh, just sell them as untested. And to be fair, I've had them in my lockup for a very long time, or quite a long time, those cameras. So I'm just happy to get some money out of them, and I don't think they cost me that much in uh, the auction job. I think it was like £20 plus commission, possibly that was even for both the boxes as well so yeah i'm just happy i'm just getting them out i've got another auction on the fourth uh, i've got two car boots over the next two weeks get get these things out get some money in it's summer it's not very it's not very you know up there or anything with uh, regard to sales get things out move on to the next batch get them in kind of thing but if i for one if i was more you know, I liked cameras more, let's say. And the two, if I was in um, a position, let's say, where I had more of an ability to test these items or more of an understanding of how to test them or more of a uh, desire to get a lot more money out of them for a little bit of more work put in, whether it be, you know, buying things for them or being able to um you know do a bit do a bit with them or whatever you know like being able to really test all the functions and stuff then yeah i might do it but i'm like at the moment i just need to get some money in i just need to get get some things flowing out i'm clearing out my lockup at the moment because i uh well basically the auction house that i mentioned shut down and um yeah i just want to clear out the lockup i want to get some stuff out there then make way for more stuff coming in um as i say two car boots one auction and then i'll have another auction probably not too long after that i need to check but yeah just want to get some stuff in get some money for the next auction and keep this stock rolling because also i've got so much listed that i really need to reduce the amount of stuff i've got listed and just turn things over more anyway and maybe get down my listings literally like maybe instead of having 1400 1500 maybe get that down to about 800 900 again and get a better sell through kind of thing get things turning over and just get things moving a little bit more rather than just having things sat and sat and sat forever or just having you know just having loads of items on because i just have too many items on basically uh right so that was oh wait is that gonna Hey, it's not... Oh, there we go. I thought it wasn't going up then. One sec. There we go. That'll do. Um, right. Ads other channel. Oh, thank you very much, uh, BCP. I did a video for that yesterday, actually. Question for Gary. Why... What car boots are on this weekend? <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, you live not far from each other, don't you? Uh, Peter's got to go, so I will see you very soon. 
Um, oh, I'll have to watch that thing as well. I'll have to watch that live stream that he did. Uh, Lil and Alpha in. Hi there, Chris B's in. I think he might have been in for a little bit. Um, oh no, he just no, he's just put, he just joined actually. Uh, who else is in? D DBG's in. She's been in for a while. I didn't say hi. Tap Peddler, Derek's in. Uh, yeah, a few more people joined. Um, right then, where are we here? Ads wants a woman with a beard and a six pack. No, oh no, I know that was terrible, wasn't it? I literally, I'm so forgetful that I forgot I even said that then. How weird is that? I forgot, I forget what I say literally minutes later or, or seconds later. I don't even know why. I, 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 it just goes. It just, you know, in one ear, out the other. I just, it just goes. I don't know what it is. It's some weird forgettery thing. Um, you want a woman with balls? <laughs> hey, everyone. Yeah, well, well. Right, I don't want a woman who's got masculine features. I want to clear that up again. But I do want a woman with balls <laughs> in the sense of, uh, she, you know, she's not, she's not afraid to poke a bit of fun, you know, that's what you want. You don't want someone who's just going to be a wet rat. I, I know, I said this the other week. You don't want someone who wants to be a wet lettuce. You want someone, you know, who's got a bit of, bit of fight. But not physically. I mean, maybe physically. That'd actually be quite sexy. But, you know, it done in the right way. But, you know... More like, you know, emotional pushback, you know, she's not, she's independent, strong, someone who's not afraid to get in there kind of thing, you know, that's what, it's what every guy wants, deep down, that's what every guy wants, they might say, oh, well, I want a, just a fairly, you know, average woman, placid woman or whatever, someone who's just, you know, quite happy with all I want to, uh, all I do and quite happy to put up with my slobbery or whatever it is, but really, you want someone with a bit of pushback, you know, it'd be boring otherwise, so, uh, do, do, no, but I don't want a bit woman with a beard and a six pack, for God's sake. Uh, yeah, that's what keeps me going. There's 100 plus people that watch all my vids, and I try to concentrate on them. Yeah, I, it, it is hard, though, sometimes. Um, not necessarily, um, I mean, sometimes just to keep going, but sometimes, for me, I don't know whether this is for you, I don't think it's so much for you as it is for me or for other people uh, aside from me, but, um... You know, for me, uh, sometimes a lot of the negativity can drive out the positivity because in some cases, on some videos, there is the more, well, not more, but the same amount of negativity as positivity. Um, and therefore, it can drown out the, the positivity and then it starts to get a bit harder. But you know what I've started doing? This is a good tip as well. Focus on doing the videos and editing the videos and doing all that sort of stuff because you want to edit and do the videos, right? And I know we all do that anyway, or all creators do that anyway, but don't think, don't even think about anyone, not, not even, almost not even yourself actually, just edit because you want to edit, you know, just, I, I, would, I loved editing that video, I don't care, if, if people, if people do dislikes, I'm prepared for, I know, I'm going to get a lot of dislikes on that video. I was actually having a joke with myself and saying, wouldn't it be funny if I got 50 dislikes on that video? That would be quite, that'd be quite an achievement, you know? Um, so, you know, I don't mind. I know, I'm I, in the back of my mind, I know that that's going to happen. Not necessarily 50 dislikes, but I know there's going to be probably the same amount of dislikes as likes, or maybe even possibly more. And that's okay, because I've enjoyed doing the editing. I loved it. I was going through doing all these different things, and, and I, pro I produced something that I'm happy with, and that is completely not me, but it's my social persona. It is my um, character. It's completely within my comedic persona or comedic character and that's what I wanted I didn't want anything more I didn't want anything other and because I produced that I managed to produce that and the editing worked okay a little bit on the green screen where there's uh, it's not worked out brilliantly with the keying still not 100% with the keying but it's okay for what it is well it's not the keying actually I know what it is it's because my green screen's too far forward but if I push it back then it, it doesn't kind of, the web, it's hard to explain, but the webcam won't actually capture in all the green screen, or actually it'll capture in all the green screen, and then there'll be bits outside the green screen that'll also be captured, and then it means the green screen doesn't work effectively because there's bits outside of it that's being captured on the webcam. 
So it was actually just the fact that my green screen is a little bit too close, so the keying didn't work correctly. That's why when I move out, I want my own studio. I want a room for YouTube specifically because then I can have the green screen. Because right now the green screen's on my bed. And I, and I can't push it back further because one, my light's up there and it'll knock the light all over and everything. And for two, as I say, the positioning of the webcam and stuff, it wouldn't work. But if I have a set up studio, I can have the green screen exactly where I want it. I can even maybe, I could possibly even do standing up green screen, like do a full body green screen. That'd be awesome. Because right now, the way my green screen works, I can only do top half of my body. But, you know, maybe I could get like a, a coating for the wall or material for the wall. And, and then even extends onto the floor as well and do like full body shots. And I think, oh my God, it'd be awesome. Uh, but to be honest, for that, I'd need a lot of lighting. I'd probably need about six lights because it wouldn't just do it that I have one light there, one light there. I don't have any lights there now, actually, but I, sometimes I do. But oh, it wouldn't just work if I had one light there, one light there because of the green screen on the floor. I'd have to have one up there. I'd preferably have to have one there as well. So I'd have to have like, one there, one there, one there one there, one there, and even maybe one down there, like one front on like that, to re it, so, debatable whether I want to spend that amount of money and, and do that, but if I did, it would be awesome, you know, it'd be absolutely awesome to have some sort of studio like that, um, but then it's where you put all the, well, I'm just going into the layout now, this is future problems, isn't it, really, but, um, yeah, yeah, so I don't even know what I was talking about. I don't. I, I literally don't know what I was talking about. Anyway, so I think that was a question anyway. No, it wasn't a question. I'm not having that as a question. Let's go back again. Uh, where are we now? Hey, could you do a video on where to pick your... Oh, where you pick your orders and show up how you pack your stuff. Also, maybe a tour of your eBay office room. I've done... Qu oh, Abby Bishop. Oh, that's someone new. That's interesting. Um, I've done... Quite, I mean, obviously, I've been on YouTube for quite a while. If you look back in my videos, you don't need to look back. You can just search, actually. If you search maybe reseller room tour or something like that, there will be ones going back. Now, there may be not updated ones, so I may very well do another video on that. Um, I will, the video about how to pick my orders, that's a good one. I used to do those. I used to do those quite a lot. And I stopped doing them because I was just doing sales updates really and other stuff. But that's an interesting idea. So I might do a, a couple of kind of, uh, what do we call them, orders going out kind of videos. Uh, so I might do, yeah, I might do a couple of them. Um, and yeah, so I can do that. I've done um, How I Pack My Stuff. It's one of the most popular videos on my channel. Uh, it's called eBay After Sales Process or some, something like that. It's in my most popular videos anyway, so you should see it quite easily. Again, it's quite an old video, but it works quite... Actually, I've done three videos on how to pack stuff now. Um, one's going into quite a bit of detail. I did, I think it was maybe about a 30, 40 minute video I did. Um, showing you how to pack different items or how I pack different items. And again, that'll be on my channel. I suppose if you just type, uh, search on my channel um, how to package or packaging or something like that, it'll probably come up, all these different videos. But yeah, because I've been doing it so long, I've probably got most of the things you can imagine in my back catalogue. Simply all you need to do is have a quick search, search of my channel for something and you'll find it. And if not, as I say, I'm quite happy to do other videos. Um, but yeah, the order's going out on that's an interesting one. And I may do a, a kind of an office tour thing, but a lot of people have seen the lock-up and the spare room and stuff, but it would it might be good to do um, a video in which I show all the different areas I keep my stock in. And just to kind of see, give you a bit of an idea, you know. Um, so that might be something I might do as well. So yeah, it's quite interesting ideas there. Ads, are you describing me? Uh, no, I'm not. I didn't... There, there wasn't a shred of that thought in my mind at all. Um, but no, you know, I, I think... You've got that kind of kickback. But... Uh, no, I wasn't. I wasn't really thinking of you at all. But yeah, that yeah, that kind of kickback is good. That's 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 a um, it's a desirable trait in a woman, isn't it? Because you know what it does. It makes a man want 
the woman more. It really does. You know, if you've got a bit of kip, it's like playing hard to get, isn't it? So when a woman plays hard to get, it makes a man want to get her even more. That's why a lot of women play hard to get because they're like, oh yeah, you know, but I'm going to get this guy because I'm playing hard to get and he's going to come and chase me kind of thing because men like the thrill of the chase. Hey, that's a good, what's that uh, phrase? It's out of uh, Sherlock or something. Was it one of the Arthur Conan Doyle books? Um, the thrill is of, uh, no, it, the, the, uh, the full is in the chase, that's it. Full is in the chase, not the capture. And it's very true. It's, you know, the, the will it, won't it. I, I discussed this the other week, or maybe on my philosophy channel. I don't know. One video I've done. I don't know. Sometime. The will it, won't it. You know, that thing. We want it. We want it. We don't want a, we don't want an easy, easy ride of it. You know, we want it a bit. Yeah. What are you going to do? You know, we've got to get it. We've got to get it. But, you know, seemingly there's a bit of friction there. We can't get it quite yet. But we want to get it. So we're gonna we're gonna try we're gonna try and then you get it and it's like yeah because it make it makes the capture so much more room you know when when it's like that but a girl who's just easily you know just you know, flirts with you like crazy and he's just oh yeah you know all, all the rest of it and all, all like doing the hair like oh yes you know and you know you know. that they like you easily you can just see it they just exude it or whatever the word is. Um, you know, it's boring. It's boring unless they're very, very attractive, and then you think, well, you know, there's not much of that friction there. There's not much of that, you know, pullback or pushback or whatever. But um, you know, they're attractive, so I'm gonna go for it anyway. That's like the male kind of typical attitude. But if that happens with someone who's fairly attractive and fairly and got a good personality and everything, but maybe not really, really much so. And then they're really kind of clingy in that way. Then that'll turn a man off because I think, well, I'll go for someone else. And then they'll, they'll end up going on to someone else who's maybe really, really attractive and who maybe does have a bit of that pushback. And you'll find, I, I don't know why this is, but I've seen that I've quite a few attractive girls. And I don't know why this is. I don't know why this is. And, and it's not, I'm not trying to generalise or stereotype too much here. But a lot of attractive girls seem to have more of that pushback um, more of that kind of, yeah, you're not getting me, mate, than uh, slightly less attractive girls. Now, it may be a, um, uh, a strength element. Maybe girls who are aware that they're attractive because they've got told it so many times by so many men and other women, they feel a sense of maybe even a little bit of ego inflation, and therefore they feel that they, they, they feel more... Um, of, a, of an ability to give that pushback to other men who are, who are trying to pursue. Whereas if you've got a slightly lesser attractive person and have never really been told that much by people that they are attractive, they're more inclined just to get go down that submissive role and just submit to someone. And then that's not really so um, desirable in the eyes of a man. It is in one respect. I mean, some men, you know, a lot of men would want someone who's, who's, who's submissive, you know, because you've got the, the dominance of a man and then the more, you know, stereotypically the dominance of a man, the slightly more submissive nature of a woman. Obviously, it's a bad thing to say in the 21st century, but, you know, uh, hormonally, it kind of makes sense a little bit. But um, what most men will find is that once they've had that for a little bit, it's not what we want, and we think, no, I want someone with a bit more pushback. So, because of that, this kind of this person, let's say, who's maybe is maybe less, slightly less attractive, and hasn't been told that they are attractive uh, that much, they might not realise a relationship for quite a while because they've not got that confidence to think, you know, I'm gonna, I, I actually am worth it, and I'm gonna give a little pushback, you know. So, uh, and then obviously on the part of the man, a confident man, when he meets a woman with a bit of pushback, because he's confident in himself, will go up and will give a little bit, give a bit more than, than she's given, because obviously he wants to kind of, out, he wants to show her, he wants to peacock, he wants to say, you know, I'm worth it just as much as you, you know, or even maybe more so than you, and then she finds comfort in that fact, and then slowly maybe submits a little bit and then they get together and they may still be they may still have that back and forth in the relationship that kind of banter that kind of you know giving as good as you get but because the relationship has been affirmed it's uh, maybe just a little bit more mellow and the man also becomes a little bit more mellow as well that's just my psychology i i'm not a psychologist 
that's just what I perceive, I observe within the, the human psyche or the human machine, kind of, or the human body or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think that that's kind of, in my, in my view, in my opinion, that seems quite obvious really in how it works and uh you know less that's why less confident men don't get women because they they don't and this is why i've not got a woman for a very long time because i've been very not confident in myself you know i readily admit that but um it's because they don't give as much as they get let's say they've got this girl who um maybe they create a bit of a void this girl or maybe they uh they do push back it's either they create this little bit of a void or we push back or we do a bit of both actually sometimes um then a man will uh, they're too insecure they, they don't go for it they don't go in there they don't they don't give a give a little bit back they don't try and pursue they don't do any of that because they're, they're insecure in themselves and that's why you'll find that they don't get as as maybe you'll find that the more secure a man is doesn't matter how attractive they are or anything, but the more confident and more secure a man is, uh, those men will usually end up with the most attractive women. The less secure a man is, the less confident a man is in their own ability and in them themselves, the less attractive woman they will get. Because the more confident men always are confident enough to go for those real stunners. The less confident men they're more happy just to settle with a nice relationship with someone who is, you know, just average, really, whether that be personality or attractiveness. But also, ego can come into this because you think, oh, well, I'm a very confident guy and I'm going to get someone um, incredibly attractive. But you might get someone incredibly attractive, but it's they're not really for you and all the rest of it. So you've got to balance that. It would be better for a very, very confident man to look around, to know that they're confident, um, and to slightly remove that sense of ego and actually look directly more, 75%, I would say, uh, towards personality. And then becoming a relationship with someone who is a very, very good, strong match with them in that sense, rather than just being confident and cocky and just going for the, the most attractive girl and then things maybe not working out or going a bit awry later down the road. So... Uh, but the good thing is, if you get attractive, if you're a very, very confident man, and you're a very intelligent man, I don't know why I'm pointing at myself, I'm not trying to point at myself to say I'm intelligent and attractive, I'm just, I don't know why I'm doing that, I don't know, anyway, but imagine you are, let's say there's a man out there who's very attractive, very confident, very intelligent, right, and then he sees a woman who's very attractive, very confident, very intelligent. And because that matches up quite well in the sense of the fact that he's going to actually pursue her, she's going to, you know, counter him a little bit. She's going to be like, do, do, you know, I'm not sure. Or maybe she creates a bit of a void and then he pursues a little bit further. Then we get together. The problem, though, that is good. That is good. But then we get into the more complex problem of personality clashes because they are two strong individuals. So sometimes, actually, moving along with this, it can be worth, as I mentioned, the man, the strong man, um, maybe just going down a little bit and saying, right, I'm going to get someone who's less strong because it works that way. Strong person with a slightly more weaker person, let's say. Uh, you know, they're someone who's strong in their personality with someone who's slightly weaker, slightly more insecure because that strong person brings up the weaker person or, you know, uh, the weaker person doesn't really pull down the stronger person because that stronger person, if they're very secure, they're not going to be knocked down very easily. But... Uh, that stronger person will pull up the the weaker person, so that's sometimes good. But yeah, sometimes with strong people, you cannot you you've got to be careful because you can get them personality clashes and stuff. And it depends on what big five personality traits they have and whether the big five personality traits are going to clash with each other and stuff. Um, so yeah, and then as I say, you've also got the problem of, of ego inflation or or just ego living in your ego of saying I want that girl because she's incredibly attractive. And yeah, you might get that girl because she's incredibly because you're confident and you know, all the rest of it, and and you end up getting her, but it it's a choice made in egoic love, and and therefore it's not it's not brilliant. Now, I'm at the moment I'm debating whether love is completely egoic, so whether it's a completely a complete structure that is present only in the ego, or whether you can have such a, such a thing as non egoic love, which is selfless love, which is pure love that is self sac uh, basically uh self sacrificing to the other person um in the fact that none of your desires are 
um, are actually not not none of your desires aren't met, but none of your desires really come into it too much. None of your ego desires come into it too much when you enter into a relationship with that person. You are simply doing so because you're absorbing all of that person. That you're simply doing so because you are selflessly giving up to that person. Um, but to me personally, in my personal or philosophical opinion, love is uh, entirely egoic. So it is an entirely ego experience there is no it's an entire it's an entire experience that is grounded in the self in the individual experience it's not so it so it's not necessary so then you get in the idea of well can you have spiritual love because really spiritual well you, certainly i don't feel you could have mystical love because mysticism is all about self-sacrifice and if you're falling in love with someone if it is true as i say that it's an egoic principle then uh you can't have mystical love spiritual love possibly you could still have it but it's whether you're living in the ego or within that love so yeah it's an interesting one but it's something i've been debating quite i've been debating love for well, really, informally for years, but more formally on a philosophical standpoint, um, really, you know, getting my ideas wrote down and thought about and really thinking them through for maybe six months, eight months now. Um, and it's interesting. It really, really is interesting. Uh, now, it's not to say even if love is entirely egoic, uh, that it's not worth experiencing as a human emotion, but it does call into question whether... Um, you know, it's as grand as we, we put it in Western culture, as we commercialise it to be. It doesn't, may, maybe it might not be that grand. It might actually be quite normal. It might actually be quite just low down. You know, not necessarily this kind of real attachment, real emotional attachment or this real binding together or this real commercialization around it. It, it may just be that it's... Um, you know, it's just something that's to be experienced on a fairly consistent level, a fairly level, uh, you know, that's kind of equal, that's one, rather than this ideal that you have to be with someone forever and you attach yourself completely to that person and it's very, very egoic in its nature, you know. Maybe that, that's why, that's why I keep thinking, maybe there is a love that isn't egoic. Maybe there is a love that is consistent. Possibly we could call it spiritual. But I don't know. I don't know. I'm still work. I'm still thinking, thinking. Now a lot of people will contest me on the fact that love is egoic or anything like that. A lot of people will say to me that no, love is this beautiful thing that arises and it's all spontaneous and everything. And while I would say that maybe there is some level of spontaneity in love, I do think there's definitely a, a big element of ego in there of, of the sense of self of i want i want this person that's that's love that's lo I, when you say i want this person i i love this person that is ego right that's very the very definition of it so because you're saying i want you're, you're grounded in your sense of self so i don't know but it, it's interesting isn't it? it's interesting well i mean it might be for a few but it might not be for anyone i don't know but it's funny uh, that girl might be incredibly dumb though, uh, then you're stuck with just eye candy. Exactly, yeah, that's what I was saying, I was saying that before, wasn't it? Was I saying that before? I don't know, anyway. Um, yeah, so, it, yeah, you're right, you know, they could be, they could be incredibly dumb. That's why I'm looking for someone, that's why I've said on my little list there, I'm looking more importantly for personality, because, you know, look, you know, actually one of my friends said this to me, very interesting point, looks fade looks fade you know they do fade so you've got to you got to think like think like that um i'm sure i could have learned a lot <laughs> i'm sure i could have learned yeah maybe i don't know I, I just randomly talk about stuff adam wants a woman that adds wants a woman that uh pushes back yeah well a bit yeah you know you got oh nice here's tommy and uh yeah i, I knew uh uh tracy was in uh, oh, you don't need to keep putting ads into the channel, BCP, but thank you very much. I know I'm talking about it quite a lot. A man can be as attractive and confident as he wants, but if he he's a shallow uh, dick, then he's a dick. Yes, we've not touched upon the idea of the fact that you can be overconfident, you can be completely egotistical in that, and therefore um, you... Uh, you know, a woman wouldn't want you, right? So you, you've got that side of it as well. 
And this is where the intelligence comes in. If you're an intelligent man, you'll understand that. So you'll, you can have the confidence, you can have a little bit of that pushback, you can have a little bit, just a small dose of that egotism that, you know, in small doses, it, it, it's actually quite attractive. But then what you can do is you can use your intelligence to kind of not go over the top with it. You know, you can use your intelligence as a way to formulate this this personality or this this kind of I, I mean this is getting into the man, manipulation of love here this is definitely living in my shadow but let's just go into this because it does make me uh, it does make me uh, uh, smile with a little bit of an evil gleam in my eyes this but you can formulate a if you're very intelligent and you're confident and all the rest of it you can formulate a, a way in which you can be, and I've done this around many different women and other people before, even men and stuff, even just even just friends, you can formulate this perfect kind of way to be able to get in there, basically, or or even just kind of to uh, get your, get what you want, even in friendships and stuff. Now, that is, of course, um, selfishness, it's egotism, but it's done in a very sly way. It's it's almost um, it's 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 the dark triad. It's almost like manipulation, narcissism, things like that. Um, but done in such a way that because you're intelligent, you can formulate this kind of thing, and no one knows you've done it. No one knows you've done it, and then they, and then you get what you want, and then they don't even realise it's happened. It's brilliant. It's so funny. It's so good. But yeah, it's very uh, shadowy that. So you you know just do it if you're doing that. Just do it low level. Don't do it. Don't go crazy. You know. And everyone does this. A lot of people do this. To the extent in which you do it is is different for different people. To me, I used to do it in quite a big way, but because I just enjoyed the game of it. I just enjoyed the game of it. It was so fun. Um, but other people might do it unconsciously, and they might just do little little tidbits here and there, just to kind of manipulate people, just in a very 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 low way, very very low level way. And then they draw them in, kind of thing. And that's the ego. That's the the selfishness. That's the slight bit of manipulation there, the maniacalness. And this is why I love psychology because you've got that evil little bit in it, and then you've got the good bit in it. And it's you know it's very trying to work people out. And and for me, you know, having as I would have to admit in various times and even possibly now suffering a little bit from ego inflation. I have to be very careful because I can think to myself, well, if I were to get to be a psychologist, I could know what everyone's thinking and then I could start to kind of, you know, manipulate people in a little bit of a way. You know what I mean? So I've got to, I've got to be very careful with what I do because I've got that shadow in the back of me that, you know, wants to come out a little bit and you have to lay it out a little bit, otherwise you'll repress it. But you don't want to let it out too much so it then you become this kind of monster, this kind of person who's, like, um, ridiculous. You know, if you're constantly projecting your shadows onto everyone, if you're constantly living in this self uh, selfish realm, this egotism realm, then it just grows and grows and grows and grows and grows, and then you become some dictator of some country or whatever. So you've got to be careful, you've got to know your shadow, you've got to know what, what you are and you've got to know your little tidbits. And then what you can do is you can accept it and in the acceptance comes control. Because you see, what I've done there is I've let you see my shadow, I've let you see the evil side of myself, but that's all under my control. I've, I've done that, I, I was very aware of the fact that I was living in my shadow, I was very aware of the fact of what I was saying there. So... Now, you know, I don't need to project it unconsciously onto other people. I can just simply consciously tell you about it, and then I don't need to do anything bad. I don't need to use it, because I've accepted it in my conscious attention and displayed it for everyone to see. So now, in a real-life situation, I don't do that sort of thing as much anymore. I might, there might, obviously, everyone projects slightly. There might be a small little projection of somewhat of a little bit of gleam of evil in my eye kind of thing. But I don't do it to the extent I did back in high school when I didn't have any idea of psychology or anything. So it, it's interesting. 
Um, Ad, who was your first famous crush? Kesha. Is it Keisha or Kesha? Uh, TikTok, that music video or... Uh, possibly one of your no, but that yeah, Kesha. I always said she was my she's my celebrity F, and you know what F means, I'm sure. Um, anyway, I would uh, right. Let me go up. I'm I'm going down in chat. Oh, also Tommy and Tracy are in as well. I have done a comedy short. I don't know whether you're aware of my weird eccentric eccentric um comedy shorts and we sell our songs and stuff, but I've done a comedy short. So that's coming out possibly next week, and it'll be very interesting for you two if you do watch it, or uh, any of the other. Because I know I've got a few more American followers. It'd be very interesting to for you guys to watch it and see what you make of it. Because I was saying a few weeks ago, and it's weird that I've got a few more Amer- American followers now. Only a few, but you know, I still there's a few there. Um, yeah, and I was saying, I, I bet that I I have a bit of a my my real weird eccentricity. And uh, level of just craziness and and that big bold personality kind of thing might just appeal a little bit to that American audience. So it would be interesting if you guys watch it or any of the other American guys who watch me now. Um, uh, to, yeah, to see what we get. We might think, oh my god, what is this? Because it's not it's not me. That's the thing, right? The comedy shorts aren't me. I want to get that clear. They are an exaggerated version of me. They are my social persona. They are ads in all of his eccentricity. The complete, full-on, 100% crazy that I could get. You know, it's not its not me in uh, the sense of how I'm talking now, you know, or, or just on a day-to-day basis kind of thing. It's a bit souped up, you know, and, that, and I like that. I like, I like having that kind of thing. Um, right then, let me do, 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 go, oh wait, what's that question? If you had to stay on a desert island for a year, I'm going to put a couple of questions up here, because we've had a couple, haven't we? Oh, wait, it's not working. Oh, there we go, right. Uh, if you had to stay on a desert island for a year and was only alive for three items, which three items would it be? Well, all right, I could do the intellectual answer, which would be a water filtration system, some sort of fishing net, and, um... I don't know, what else? Because that's my food and my water done. So then I'd need entertainment, wouldn't I? Now, I can't have anything electrical because I'd need a charger for something electrical and therefore I couldn't have a fourth item. So I couldn't have anything electrical. So uh, I would have to have something simple, probably something that we was used in maybe the 1800s or early 1900s as some sort of wooden toy. I mean, yeah, okay, you could probably have something from these days that isn't... No, I could have solar powered. No, I, I'm more. I'm better than that. I can have. I know what I'm doing. I can have solar panelled. Right. So I would have a, an electrical item that is solar powered. Um, so are there phones that are solar panel powered? I'm sure I could get one. If I spent a lot of money, I'm sure I could get a solar power, powered powered phone. I reckon there is one. So I'm going to say that, but if phones aren't solar powered, then something else. So that's my entertainment. Oh, no, I wouldn't have Wi-Fi, would I? Ooh, no, I wouldn't have Wi-Fi. No, well, I could install 4G and I might just get 4G on a desert island, right? Maybe or not. No, maybe not. Probably not, actually. Yeah. Well, it's either a solar-powered pow- phone or something, or a ball in a cup. But I got my food and water sorted, so I'm cool. You know, I got my, my net or my, my spear or something, uh, and then I've got my water filtration system that fil- filters out the salt water, so I'm cool. So I could say that, or I could just go with, well, you know, wouldn't it be nice to have, um, you know, just some, some cool luxuries, just and, and even if it means I'm going to die in two days or three days' time, at least it would be nice to have some luxuries. You know, like a nice... Uh, I don't even know. I, I don't really have much much luxuries. Um, yeah, just a, a really nice meal. You know, like a, re- a really good meal. Uh, I would have to get it taken out from somewhere what, and then export it to the desert island, but a really nice meal would be good. Um, a... Uh, oh, God, it's hard, isn't it, this? It was actually easier to do the intellectual answer to this. I can't think about the luxury answer to this. Some sort of... um, Well, no, I wouldn't need a CD. Why am I saying CD? That's so old school. Um, No, I'd have a... uh, Well, I'd have a phone built with all my songs in. Like, loads of different songs in. So I can just have, like, parties on there. And then I'd have... um, What else? 
Oh, can I take a person with me? I could have someone with me. Can I take... Is that... Well, that's not well, That's not allowed, is it? You can't take a person. It's not allowed, I don't think. Um, well, in that case, it'd have to be some sort of sex toy or a blow-up doll that's a sex doll type thing because you got to do it, haven't you? you got to do it. So I'll have a nice meal. I'll have all my songs on my iPhone. Uh, yeah, all my songs on my iPhone. Uh, which are already on my iPhone anyway, so that's count counting as one. And then some sort of sexy thing just to pass the time before I die in about three days because I've not got any way to have water or food. Um, so, yeah, that's an interesting one, Matt. Like, I think we're okay for questioning. I don't think I'm going to put that up. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Let me go up. You are... Uh, yes, you are. Love the... Oh, there's loads of stuff in the chat. Add, when you wake up, uh, what are the first 10 things you do in the morning? Feel free to elaborate if you must. I get up at um, anywhere from half... What time is it? 14... Oh, God, 14.01? No way! We've been on for an hour! Oh, my God! That's not an hour! We can't be an hour! We're not on an hour! We've not been on an hour, surely. Oh, my God, we've been on an hour! What?! I thought it was about 20 minutes! I thought it was about 20 or 30 minutes! Right, I'll do a few more questions and then I'll go because I was in the middle of answering this one. My God, an hour. An hour. Oh, God, I need to make these two-hour shows. I need to make these two-hour shows. Should I just start making these two-hour shows? Because I, I like to elaborate, you know. I don't like to... Oh, God, an hour. God, that was nothing. It's like, hey, this. if I do this six-hour or 12-hour stream, this is going to be easy. I've done, I've done an hour of talking... That was a breeze. I only need to times that by about six or twelve. Oh, I can do that easy. Um, when you wake up, what is that? Right, so I get up between half five and seven. Fluctuates massively, as I mentioned in the podcast. In the Reselling Re Plug, Reselling Rebels podcast, Monday at 10 a.m. GMT, soon to be British summertime. No, no, British summertime, soon to be GMT, I think. When's GMT t turn over? Is it September? No, it's October, isn't it, actually? Isn't it? It's October. so uh, Maybe a, a few months it'll be uh, bloody summertime. Um, no, GMT. What am I getting? What am I getting time zones mixed up? Um, no, so 5.30, 7 a.m. And then I go on my Instagram and I do my daily quote. So again, a little plug for my Instagram. I do daily quotes on my Instagram stories. They're very, they're brilliant quotes. Absolutely brilliant. I can't... They're brilliant. Um... And so, yeah, follow me over on Instagram. Link will be down below, or the little handle will be down below, at AdsRobo96. I do daily quotes on there, so that then it gets everyone hyped up for the day, and I put them on at about 6 o'clock in the morning. So as soon as anyone gets up, maybe other people get up at 6 or 7 or 8 or whatever it is, we've got a daily quote there to start the day. Sometimes I miss them out because I forget, and then I'll just do them later on in the day, but... 95% of the time, always on there, about 6 o'clock. Um, so then people get hyped up for the day. You're like, oh, yeah, that's a good quote for today. Let's get hyped up. Um, I don't know. Maybe no one does that. I just like to think that people do that. Um, so then what happens is I um, I then get up. And, you know, I, I, after a bit of time on my phone, not long. Now, I, don't, I do not scroll on Facebook or Instagram on my phone in bed. Bad, bad thing to never do that because what happens is you start to get a little bit down because you're like, oh, you're seeing everyone else do all their sort of stuff and you're not getting into the day yourself and you're not doing anything. It, it was really bad. I used to get, I, I, I didn't get down with it, but I used to get um, just feeling like, oh, well, you know, everyone else is doing all these things and I've not got out of bed yet. So you see what I mean? You can see how that kind of transpires. So, um, yeah, so I don't do that. I get up. Then what I do is I do a very quick bit of admin, turn my computer on, do a quick bit of admin, answer my messages. Um, do I, I've got loads of different platforms that I go on. I've got my Steam investments that I go on. I've got my Etsy shop that I go on. I've got my eBay shop that I go on. I do my, uh, not every day, but every few days I go and check my Amazon Associates account. I check my eBay Affiliates account. <laughs> I check, uh, I do my, uh, I check my uh, coin market cap for my cryptocurrency. I check a couple of other things. Um, so all my admin gets kind of sort of little bits of admin, bits and bobs of admin. Um, and then what I'll do normally, straight after that, is packing. So I'll get straight down, sort my packing out really, really early, about half six, seven o'clock, done with the day. Brilliant, that is. I would highly advise anyone, get up at half six, do your packing. Brilliant. Get, get into that routine. Brilliant. Get that done. Come back upstairs, label. 
sort out everything. Uh, if parcels need going out, then I'll do that about 9 or 10 p.m. Uh, 10 p.m., 9 or 10 p.m., 9 or 10 a.m., um, I will, uh, you know, do little bits of admin between 8 and 9, but at 8 o'clock, around between 8 and 8.15, I go for my morning walk, because I like to get out for a morning walk. So go for that, do about 2,000 steps, not a huge walk or anything, just a little one. Have my breakfast, then do a bit more admin or whatever till 9 o'clock. Then, as I say, I might go out and do the parcels, or what I'll do is... Um, usually something on the computer in the morning. I don't know why, but I gravitate towards things on the computer in the morning. So maybe editing, maybe recording a video, something like that. Then sometimes at about 11, I'll do my photography because that's always a hurdle for me. Doing photography sometimes be, it can sometimes be a bit hard for me. I sometimes, oh, do I have to do photography? It's just my thing. I don't know why. Um, but then once I've done it, I'm cool. I'm all right. Then I have my lunch. Then afternoon is... Uh, or what's happening? Well, maybe a bit more sorting. Maybe if I've not done my photography, I'll do that. Possibly a bit of editing sometimes in the afternoons. I love doing editing in the afternoons. Um, and then what else, really? I mean, sometimes I do listings in the afternoon, but normally I do that about 8 or 9 o'clock in bed. Um, and, and just general bits and bobs throughout the day. I'll sometimes go out and see a friend for an hour just randomly in the day because obviously I work. I get up and I go to bed. I don't have working hours. I just work right through and then I might have breaks in between. I've said that for quite a while. So, you know, some days, like yesterday, well, actually, yeah, yesterday, I was working for about 14 hours yesterday. Give You know, there were a couple of breaks during the day, of course. Um, did I, I didn't go around to see my friend yesterday either, so I was working pretty solidly. That's crazy. Um, and it soon wraps up. I mean, I was doing all that editing yesterday for the comedy short and everything, so it soon wraps, wraps up. Um, but, yeah, I just do bits and bobs like that, I'll maybe go out to see a friend and then come back, do a bit of editing or do a bit bit more photography or a bit more sorting or whatever it may be. Uh, then I'll get my tea at about oh, five, six o'clock. Then I'll do some reading. Um, I always try and get some reading in if I can. I've not been doing it recently, but I always try and get some in between about six and half six or half six and seven. Then I'll do my final walking. Oh, the other thing I do during the day is go out for a walk. I normally go out for a second walk in the day. And then I do my third walk of the day around sort of seven, half seven. Now, this is on a day where it's a typical day. Sometimes there are days few times a month, maybe, that this routine gets blown out of the water. And you know how it is. I do other things and, and other things happen. And also, we've got to account for the days where I'm at the car boot. Uh, so that obviously messes up my routine. We've got to account for the days where I'm going out sourcing to charity shops, which is a couple of days a week. So then that messes up my routine a bit. And then, it, and then I just get things done where I can on those days and stuff. I also, on a Tuesday, every sort of two or three weeks, I meet my grandparents for lunch in my local town. So, of course, when I'm doing that, that slightly messes up things. And also on a Friday at about one o'clock, half one, quarter to two, something like that, it depends. My gro my other grandma comes around to see me as well for a little bit, for about half an hour, 45 minutes. So then, obviously, I take that time out there as well. And then on a Saturday, I am trying to have a day off. Uh, it, you know, it's not always completely effective. Sometimes I don't have a day off. But, um, yeah, mainly I'm trying to have a day off on Saturday. I was trying to take both Saturdays and Sundays off, and I did do it for a while. But I've been back to the car boots recently on a Sunday. So, you know, after I've got back from the car boot, recorded a haul video and stuff, or recorded something, it's, you know, I've done five hours of work right there. You know, I've done, literally once I recorded, the whole, got everything back, been the car boot for two hours, got up and everything, done that, recorded the video, sorted all the stuff from the haul, possibly photographed it straight afterwards as well, and then maybe edited the video on the same day. You know, as I say, I've done five or six hours of work on a Sunday. So even on a Sunday, when I'm really, I would like to have a day off, I don't, you know, it's just one of those things. And I'm never going to stop in that regard because... I've not got enough time, and, and I'm being very genuinely honest here, and I know I sound like Gary Vee and stuff, and it's not that I don't, I don't have anything necessarily against him, I agree with a lot of what he says, it's just, I don't like being his kind of poster boy, I, you know, I like being, uh, you know, I like different philosophies and stuff rather than just his, but you have to agree, you have to, well, you don't have to agree, but you have to admit sometimes he does make pretty good points, but I don't have enough time on this planet, I don't know how much time I've got left, but assuming that I get, I'm blessed and I get to 70 or 80, I've not got enough time on this planet to be wasting on doing things that are, um, you know, uh, just don't really, 
add to my philosophy, let's say, you know. Um, and there are things that I do, such as I sometimes do meditation. I sometimes do uh, I practice self-remembering and awareness meditation during the day and things like that, which are very opposed to the Gary V philosophy of you've not got enough time and all the rest of it. But um, I kind of, I suppose I integrate the two philosophies. So I have this kind of idea of always being focused on the now, but at the same time, I have one eye on the future and I'm, I'm exercising that Gary Vee mentality. And the combination, and I think Tony Robbins actually does meditation or something like that. He does something like that anyway. But the combination of the Gary Vee mentality of, oh, we don't have enough time and, oh, we're an individual consciousness and, oh, my God, you're, you're an ego and if you die, then that's it. You know, that kind of mentality of you've got to make your mark on the world and and, you, uh, and that's it and everything's going to fade and everything. That mentality structured in with the mentality of meditation, being present in the now, bit of self-surrendering, all that sort of stuff. The, the mentalities actually oppose each other. But much like yin and yang, the light principle, the dark principle, they actually, when they come together, they complement each other. And you can, if you start to structure it in the right way, you can start to get this holistic philosophy that is actually rather interesting. You can be, be uh, you can be someone who is present in the now, who is very meditative in their consciousness, but that is also uh, thinking about things that they want to do, thinking about the future as well, thinking about uh, where they want to take things, what they want to do with their life, all that sort of stuff. So they do actually fold in well. However, it is an incredibly skillful balancing act to be able to to do that, to be able to have those two philosophies in your mind and and not let one overtake the other, let's say. Sometimes it can, you might do a bit more on one and a bit more on the other. But generally, they always kind of balance each other. Sometimes I might be a bit more of a Gary V mentality and I can think to myself, oh, actually, I'm not focusing too much on my meditation and being present in the now and being organic and naturalistic and all the rest of it. And that just takes over a bit. But then what will happen is that naturalistic philosophy will take over another time, few days. So they never really take over each other. It's just this dance, this balancing act kind of thing or this 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 thing that's going round essentially but yeah so it, it's quite interesting but i don't know what i was talking about then so i'm just going to go down the chat um right then where are we uh pro tip save space ads if you sit on your hand save space ad. if you sit on your hand for 30 minutes put it to sleep it will feel like you brought a lady friend onto it no oh my god oh my god toy seriously jesus my god that's just, oh, God. Bloody hell, I tell you, my chat is filth. It's filth in here, isn't it? Uh, yes, two hours. What, you mean you want me to go for two hours? Oh, that sounds wrong. Uh, I can go for two hours if you want. And not in that way. Not in that way. I don't think I've, I've not got two hours in me, Jesus. <laughs> Bloody hell. Um, can't wait. Of course, I will watch it, and I'm sure it will be pleasing. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it may well, you know, yeah, just... If right, if you are a um, slightly eccentric person, uh, or let's say you are someone who is open to the idea of weirdness or eccentricity, you'll probably like it. It'll be all right. If you're a little bit more of a conformist, you probably don't want to watch it. I'm just going to say that because... It might actually just be like, oh my god, what is this? This is actually making me cringe or something. So yeah, if that, that's the way I that's the way I kind of put it to people. If you know, if you are just a complete conformist, don't wa don't watch them. Don't watch the comedy shows because you're not gonna, you know, if you've got a good sense of humour, if you like a bit of eccentricity, a bit of weirdness, then you're gonna like them, you know. And I can I can see that you are, or I can well not see, but I can. Uh, let's say, presume that you are quite a bubbly individual, that you are kind of someone who is uh, inclined to a little bit of that humour, a little bit of that weirdness and stuff, in a good way. So, uh, yeah, I would imagine you'd quite enjoy it. I think Tommy will enjoy it as well if he watches it. So, uh, But I don't know, I'm just guessing. Um, question, what do you think reselling will be like in five years? Um, I think it'll be much the same as it is now. A lot of people, we can throw all these theories around of, oh, well, it's going to be 20 times harder and it's going to be all this and all the rest of it. Yeah, okay. I get the point that there's going to be new eBay policies. There's going to be new things to live up for, up to in eBay's eyes. But 
you know, really, the base act of reselling, the buying and selling something and putting it on eBay is going to be much the same. The only way it could really change is that if eBay put in some crazy policies, but the act of buying and selling isn't going to change drastically. You're always going to be able, well, I would imagine you'd always be able to put something on eBay uh, and, you know, buy it and put it on eBay and then sell it um, without too much hassle, you know, really on an individual item basis. Um... But yeah, there could be a few new rules that come in that make it a, a tiny bit harder or whatever. But the people who are going to do it are going to do it and are going to continue to do it. Uh, those who don't like the new rules aren't going to stick with it. And therefore, that's just how it is. You know, nothing's going to change really. So, um, yeah, I think with, with sourcing, there is the perception that it may get a little bit harder and I, and I voiced my concern on this with the charity shop video the our charity shops dead video but I think there's always well I know I know I don't even think I know there's always going to be sourcing opportunities out there it's just the fact that they'll change you know change with time they're not gonna they're not gonna be the same they're gonna be different you know they're gonna it might not be that car boots reign supreme forever it might be that other areas come up there might be something create completely new that comes up so for example jumble sale trails you know they're over age well not over age at the moment but they're, start, they're slowly starting to come up you know so they might replace car boots or something i don't know so you know it's just, they'll just change opportunities will change and i can see that happening to be honest because more and more people i don't think are, are that hell-bent on getting up at 6 a.m and driving to a field somewhere and offloading items i mean yeah okay a lot of the dealers will do it and then just people who are addicted to do it to it will do it as well but the average family, they don't necessarily really want to do that. That's why they're selling their items on Facebook or maybe they're donating a few items to charity as well. But um, if we were to do this jumble trail sale, if that was to start in a big way, you could start them at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. or 1 in the afternoon or whatever. Those, all those families wouldn't need to get up. They wouldn't need to travel. They just simply put a table outside the house, much like a garage sale. It's basically a garage sale in, over, over in America. Um... So, uh, and then put the items outside, and then that's that. So, I could see maybe that becoming more popular in a few years, but I don't think anything's really going to change drastically. I think it's going to be all right. I think it's going to be quite cool, really. Um, and I'm still going to be here. I'm still going to be here. Whether I don't know what I'm going to be doing reselling. Hopefully, I will, but, you know, I'm still going to be here on YouTube. But even, even if the channel just gets stripped and I'm not reselling anymore or whatever it may be, I don't know what's going to happen. But the channel's still going to be here. I'm still going to be doing this. I'm still going to be talking nonsense. And, uh, yeah, we'll hope that something turns out and that reselling doesn't get incredibly hard or anything and it means that we all have to quit or whatever it may be. But I don't think it's going to be that, so it's cool. Um... Uh, do, do, do luxury is overrated good people is all you need yeah it is but are you allowed to take people to a desert island i don't think you are i don't think in that example you are i don't know i'm not sure can anyone actually elaborate me on that is yeah time flies when you're on a tangent i, I know it's not crazy um oh my god it, bcp's putting everything in the merch and everything oh thank you very much um yeah, so I don't think you are allowed people on the desert island. So someone might be able to confirm that for me. I'm not sure. How's Mammy? You seen her this week? How's Mammy? Of course I've seen my mum this week. What the hell? Yeah, of course I bleed live with my mum. Of course I've seen her. For God's sake. Um, yeah, but I've not. Yeah, I mean you do. Well, you saw her for about one second or two seconds in. In that charity shop hunting video. We'll have to get her on at some point, I suppose. But she didn't... I, we, did I ask her to do Thursday Talks not long ago? I don't know whether she wanted to do it or something. I'm not sure. But I will, I'll get her on at some point. I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, it's all about the same as Jim Rohn says. It's always about the same as Jim. Yeah, what, what, I don't know what you mean in there. Uh, are you meaning in reference to the stuff that I was talking about a minute ago? Yeah, I do, I do like Jim Rohn. Now, again, he has he has a bit more of that tendency of the philosophical lines or the philosophical stance or the mental, mentality stance as Gary V. The good thing about Jim Rohn is that he dispenses his, his advice in a more palatable manner. For me, personally, even Gary V, I totally respect Gary V's kind of straight to the point kind of drilling it down into approach and it's very effective 
But for me, I like a little bit more of a relax. So Jim Rohn, I, I, I agree that the way in which he presents the information, the information he gives, generally, is very pal palatable and he's good information. But for me, and this is just my opinion, I'm not saying anything bad about anyone else, but for me, I have a tendency to look at the organic philosophy slightly more. So, although I can watch people like Gary Vee, and as I mentioned, I, I incorporate little bits of Gary Vee's philosophy and, and Jim Rohn and stuff into my, my overall life, and although I can palette them and I can watch them and I can um, absorb what they have to say, um, I do also like a bit more of a, uh, an organic, uh, spiritual, mystical, naturalistic philosophy of life that is grounded in uh, living for every moment and embracing yourself in uh, the fullest capacity that you can do. And again, some of these traits actually of that uh, go over to the Gary Vee, Jim Rohn, Tony... Well, I mean, I don't really... I shouldn't really lump Jim Rohn in with Gary Vee and Tony Robbins because he's not... He shouldn't lump him in with that because he's not quite that. But, uh, you know, if we're saying that that's similar to one kind of philosophy, what it is, is it's an individualistic philosophy. And while there is nothing wrong with individualism, it excludes ecological awareness. So, you know, it excludes that idea that the planet is one whole. And I did a philosophy video on this over on my philosophy channel. I did a philosophy video on the divinity of food, specifically stating ecological awareness and why you should respect your food and also why you should expect your respect your wider environment. So if we're going to live as an individual or an individual... If everyone's going to live in an individualistic philosophy of I'm kind of going to be all I can be, all the rest of it. There is an element of, and I'm not going to be conformist, and I'm going to be all, you know, all I can be and all the rest of it. There is an element of hostility there towards anyone else who is individual, individualistic. So if someone's individualistic, strong personality, I'm not going to conform, I'm going to do everything my way, and then someone else is the same. Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes they can meet up very, very well, but sometimes there can be an element of hostility there, usually grounded in the ego of the two individuals. You can see this when Gary Vee met Tony Robbins in his, um, in his interview. Tony went in with a very, very firm handshake as if he was trying to dominate Gary. Gary didn't like this, or, or you know, like unconsciously he didn't like this. He might, might not have been consciously aware of it. But I think Gary Vee is very intelligent and I think he will have, have conscious awareness of his own ego So uh, in, in a big way. So then he, I think he tapped him on the shoulder or something or grabbed him a little bit more because he's trying to get a bit more one-up kind of thing. Now, Gary Vee will be very quick to say that I don't live in my ego and he demonstrates it perfectly. He, he doesn't live in his ego. He lives in his ego only as a persona. But behind that egoic persona, that very big brash guy who's like, I'm going to get to the point, I know what I'm doing, all that he doesn't know what he's doing, but he, behind, he's very, very clever. This is why Gary Vee is incredibly intelligent because behind that, he knows all this. He knows. He knows what he's doing. And, and he knows deep down that he can surrender his ego completely. This is why he always he, he touched upon um, the fact that, oh, well, I never tell people I've got a big dick or anything or all the rest of it because that's people living in their ego. He actually said something exactly like that, which makes me believe that he he's kind of he not necessarily transcended the ego, but you know, within that realm, possibly. Um, so it, it's it's quite interesting. You know, he just plays with the ego, like a cat plays with a ball of string. You see, you can live in your ego, or you can step back from it and play with it, and just play with it like a cat with a ball of string. That's like I choose to do it. I love, I love playing with it. It's, it's funny. Um, but yeah, so um, there is that element there, that little bit of element of hostility. Now, it can work, it can work, it, or the, the planet being individuals, but the only way a planet can be individuals and society can work and function perfectly with everyone being an individual, if beneath it all, they know organically they come from the same ecological environment and that they are as uh, an organism with the planet in the water cycle and stuff like that, because of the water cycle, they are as one sort of you could almost say super organism in one regard. Uh, now, that 
is a little bit more speculative, but the science of, of the reality of the science of things is that ecological environment, ecological awareness shows us that we are all part of the same cycle, and therefore we are all connected and interrelated in various different ways. Therefore, an individualistic philosophy is a in opposition to the organic nature of the human. And so, if you are going to be an individualist, you have to understand before the individualism that you are a collective whole of the rest of humanity. Now, a person who can be an individualist and also know that they are collective with the rest of humanity is beautiful, absolutely beautiful person. And you will see that when they walk around and they know that, they know the ecological awareness, but they're also very, very individualistic, you can see that they have this kindness in them, but also they have uh, not, they have a little bit of hostility, they have a little bit of ego there to be able to push back when they need to. And it's a, it's a beautiful psychological development, absolutely beautiful. And if you can get to that, if you can get to that, it's, oh, that's, that's, that's really brilliant. It's not top notch, it's not apex of human consciousness, as I would call it, but it, it's good. It's good. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm putting down? You know what I'm putting down? You know? You know? Yeah, I'm sure you do. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, it, it's good. It's good. Um, so, yeah. So, I admire that guy, v, actually, because when you look behind what he's, what he's about, you can see that actually he's way more intelligent than you may think. Now, this could be... Uh, me projecting intelligence on him that he doesn't possess. Maybe he doesn't possess all of that intelligence. But there's very... There's quite a few things that tell me he does. And that he is... He psychologically is very intelligent as well. And and this can be shown in his in his motivation. Why does he have so much motivation? Why why can he keep going? Why can he keep going? Because holistically... He has, he has formed his psyche to be very, very strong. He, he knows himself. He knows what he's doing. He can be very aware of himself. And so that means that he can gain this motivation. Uh, essentially, it's basically um, newfound psychological power or psychological strength um, from the breaking down of, of unconscious complexes in your psyche. So because he doesn't have any, let's say, psychological complexes, he has access to this new power uh, that then allows him to um, basically have a better relationship with his mind and his body, which then ultimately means he can have more motivation psychologically and, and keep going. You know, obviously he still gets tired like the rest of us, but because he's got maybe more of a holistic psyche, he can keep going, keep going, keep going because he's got that mentality. Um, not to say that mind is... Well, I suppose mind in one way could be thought of as, as superior to the body, but it's more of a, a relationship. It's more of a, an interdependent relationship. If you know your mind and you know your body, then you can start to prog progress kind of thing. And that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to learn mind, body kind of thing so that then I can move past my anxiety with full force, get rid of... Uh, the unconscious complexes that I have to then free a little bit more psychological energy that then will mean that I can really get to 100%, you know, really get to the to the, the, the best that I can be as a human. Or, well, I mean, we don't really need to call it this because this isn't actually what I'm referring to. But also, when you start to do this, you can start to get to the place which I'm calling the apex of human consciousness as well but the apex of human consciousness in the way that I'm turning it terming it as a psychological phrase is di slightly different to to that it involves that but it's not quite that it's slightly different as well so yeah uh we're not far off for two hours um I have no idea what you are saying not up to the higher level of consciousness thought or something no you don't need to be up to the higher level of thought to know what I'm saying you know it's not, it's not really there's not really, you know, a lot of mystics or spiritual people will say there's this, like, higher level of consciousness. This doesn't matter so much whether you're in a higher level of consciousness so much that you're just kind of experiencing life for what it is, you know. It doesn't, it doesn't matter that you don't need to be in an... You don't need to be in an apex of human consciousness or a superior consciousness to understand the world, to understand 
life, essentially. In fact, you could even say that the most ignorant people in the world understand life um, more than anyone. And I'll tell you for why. It's a, psych it's a philosophical thing that I've got, theory I've got. When you have someone that doesn't, that's ignorant to, um, you know, to all these, let's say, loads of different problems and psycho psychological problems and, you know, they're, they're, let's just say they're not very intelligent, for example. You'll find that a lot of less intelligent people are the most happiest people in the world because they go along through their life. They're not worried about anything particular. in particular. They just go through their life taking what comes, taking it as it comes, and just fairly happy. If you get to, let's say, a high level of consciousness, or you get to becoming more intelligent, or you're um, very analytical, you'll find that your levels of happiness will decrease naturally, because you're so, you're just exploding with everything, and it's like, I, I just turn off for a little bit, won't you? Um, but if someone who's slightly ignorant or is um, maybe just less intelligent, they're so happy. You walk around, they'll go partying, then they'll go into work and they're quite happy just to chat to a few people and work and do the job. And then they'll go, uh, you know, they'll go round here, there and everywhere and stuff. And they'll just live life. They'll take it as it comes. They're not incredibly worried, as I say, about anything. They're just living life for the basic realm of what it is and that's what life's all about living life from a basic thing of what it is doing these experiences doing that doing this doing the other all this stuff you know all this consciousness higher levels of consciousness and all the intellectual debate it's all just added extras you don't need it you know it's all it's all just things to make life more exciting. You know, we're intelligent, so what we do is we think about different things, we think about science, we think about different pursuits, and all it is, it's just a way to expand the, the fun, you know, because intelligence is fun, it can be a burden, but when you're intelligent, it can be fun as well, you can you can look at things in different ways, and you can think, oh, that's interesting, that, looking at it this way, so it's fun, so it's a way that we can experience the world that is fun, but... It's a burden at the same time because if you're very intelligent, you kind of can't let go and just experience things for what they are. You know, you might go to a party, but if you're very intelligent, you might be very, very self-conscious. You might be, you might, it might be a little bit afraid that maybe people think you're geeky or something. I don't know. Or you might be um, worried about the next thing that's going to come along. Or you might be worried about something that you've just done, you know, or you might be a bit anxious about something you've just done. Whereas... If you just go and just experience it and just enjoy it and try and just drop all those kind of preconceptions, you'll find that life is right there in front of you, essentially. So, yeah. Ah, okay. Like the guy who chose to be in the Matrix. I don't know. I don't know who the guy is in the Matrix. I don't know. I've not watched it. I know. I know. I know what he's going to say now. You're not watching the Matrix. What are you on about? Like, it's just crazy. Right, okay, I'm going to go in a sec. Uh, no one's chatting except the here, so I guess that that means people want me to go. I've got, I've got 22 people still in, so... Um, yeah, uh, three youngsters, two with high-grade autism. Wow, what's that? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any more questions or anything. He knew what he was eating was not steak but he chose the matrix over reality oh so he he was in he was in like a the computer generated system and he just chose to stay there ah that's interesting because that that goes in with the whole philosophical debate of whether this is this is a um well, I suppose it's like a pseudo-philosophical debate. It's not really, you know, really, it's not like proper. It is philosophy, but it's kind of like, uh, no, not armchair philosophy, but table philosophy. Like, oh, isn't it, wouldn't it be good? You know, but I suppose there is some validity to it in the fact that we could be in a, in a, in a simulation of some regard. Um, but yeah, and then the other one is, I was talking to my friends the other day about this, um, about the fact that we're in an alien zoo. Have you heard that one? The fact that we're, right now, we're in an alien zoo, and, like, there's big alien giants somewhere, I don't know, uh, and, and they're kind of looking in, in on us as an enclosure, so, like, the, the whole of Earth 
is an enclosure in an alien zoo, and these aliens are massive. Um, and there's the other one that I was talking to my friends about, about the uh, us being, our universe being a tiny little bit of spit in the inside of a, of a blown up balloon, uh, and then obviously this balloon is in a giant world, and, that, and we're just this little, we're just this little thing in this tiny little bit of spit in this other universe. Because you see, these theories can all have somewhat validity because of the fact of the allegory of the cave, the fact that we don't know what is on the other side of. Um, reality. We don't know what's on the other side of the universe. We don't know what's on, you know, we, we can't see further than what we already know. And it could be that on the other side of what we already know, there's a huge bigger world that is totally in disregard for our own physics and our own science and everything. So therefore, even though these, phys even though these theories probably aren't true, and are completely bizarre and eccentric, they still could have validity because of that very fact. You see, science is only provable in the, the realm of our universe. Beyond that, we, we don't know. It's, it's just a concept. It's a con conceptual conceptualization of uh, a way of how things work within our own universe. But beyond that, it could be anything crazy weird. And then once we look at that, if we could see that, then we could look at our own science and think, oh, actually, well, we need to we need to rejig this a little bit because something's not right here. You see, so um, yeah, that that interests me quite a lot. If you're an animal, what would you be? Well, my spirit animal is a fly, and I know that that sounds uh, weird, but I am convinced it's a fly because every time I uh, every time I meditate. I, sometimes I meditate under this nice tree. It's a lovely tree, um, but I meditate under this nice tree, and I get flies. I get I get about six flies come on me, and then when I was um, on holiday one time, I sat watching my watch. And I know that sounds weird, but I actually sat. I wanted to watch a clock for an hour, right, and see if I can do it. Um, so I watched this clock for. I watched my watch for an hour. I just had my watch like I was lying down on a sun lounger. And I watched me watch for an hour, and um, this fly landed on me, and then it, and then it flew, it flew from my leg to my hand, and then just watched me for ages, and I was just watching it, watching, it, watching it, and then it kept like coming slightly closer to me, and I was just watching it for ages. We were just like staring into each other. It's weird, and then. Ever since then, I've always felt like flies are around me. You know, it, it's weird. It's hard to describe. All it is really is uh, a conceptualization. It's just, it's just me thinking that there's something there. It, but it possibly isn't. You know, but I always feel my spirit animal is is a fly. I used to think it was an owl because you know I'm fairly intelligent and stuff. So I thought possibly an owl. But it seems that more validity comes from. A fly, and I just mean the common house fly, you know, just a fairly common fly. So yeah, I would say fly. Um, I don't, I don't know why it's weird. Um, yeah, ignorance is bliss for some. It is, it is very, very true. It is. Um, so yeah, I, I think I'll leave it there. Um, on that weird note of my spirit animal, um, being a fly. That's a bit of a, bit of a weird note there, but uh, yeah, I just I don't know. It just always it's weird, and they always seem to have flies in this room as well. I know that's quite common. Uh, it's not you know it's just coincidence or anything or something, but I always seem to have flies in this room. But yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's weird. It's weird. It's not like flies are just going around me because I'm really unclean or anything. Don't get that idea. I'm just meaning that you know every now and then I seem to fly. You know it's weird. The fly with Jeff Goldblum made me sick when he was mutating, and then the maggot baby was too much. Still a great movie. Oh, I've not seen it. I don't like the thrillers or horrors. Or I don't think it's a horror, is it? But it might be a thriller of some sort. I've watched the one, the Simpsons episode with Bart, where he turns into a fly. Is it is it similar to that? Maybe that was actually based on that film. It probably was. Um, yeah, I love the Simpsons. It's great. Uh, well, it was good. But then, as it got older, as many people will say, it got a little bit worse. The first series, the first few series, are really, really good. I, I think, I think my favourite was maybe series ten to thirteen or something, something like maybe eight to thirteen. They were pretty good. Um, 
But then it got, you know, but don't get me wrong, there's still some good episodes, you know, even in the later series, but it, I feel it just was better around that sort of time. Um, anyway, so I'll leave it there. So we've done two hours today, that's mental. So thank you everyone for sticking with me, um, and I will see you in the next one. Uh, I didn't really do the question count very well, so might just leave that next week if we're not going to do the... You know, I'll do it when we're doing the 50 questions, but I'm just going to leave it otherwise. So, uh, yeah, see you in the next one, guys. See you very